Now I want to apologize to the viewers. I'm sorry, I know that could have been a little traumatizing to a few people, but I just want to let you know that I promise I'm not going to do that again. So let's learn about tire pressure monitoring systems. These systems are very important. Back in the 1990s, we first introduced run flat tires. For those who don't know what those are, they are tires that could develop a leak, but still be driven for a limited speed and limited distance in order for the driver to go get them fixed somewhere. And oftentimes the issue was the driver wasn't even aware that their tires were leaking. Huh? That's why we need a system that would remind you, the driver, that maybe your tires are low or also overinflated because neither are good for your tires. If you want to know what your tire pressure should be at, you want to check your driver's door. The manufacturer puts a sticker in there. It's called a tire placard that shows you what your tire pressure should be at. It also tells you what your tire size is for your car. So if you're bored, if you're sitting in your car, you don't know what to do, you could open your door and just check that out just to have that information in the back of your head. So back to these systems, really there are two systems that we're using today and that's the indirect tire pressure monitoring system and the direct tire pressure monitoring system the indirect system we're gonna look at this tire valve right this is gonna represent the indirect tire pressure monitoring system for the direct system for the direct system we're gonna look at this it is still a tire valve but it has a sensor attached at the bottom so this will represent the direct tire pressure monitoring system. So first we're going to look at the indirect system. Now we're going to talk about this tire valve. If you're looking at it, it is a conventional style tire valve. There's nothing special about it. All it is is a rubber body. There's a hole at the end of it and there's a cap. When you take that cap off on the inside, you have a Schrader valve. Now when you hook up your air tool, that Schrader valve opens, allows you to put air in and into the tire and that's how you get air inside your tire. The way you get this on is the same as I showed in my rim flipping video. I have a special tool I use. I go from the top and I just pull it through. If you've already noticed, this right here has really nothing to do with your tire pressure monitoring system. This is just there for you to put air in your tires. The way this system actually works is, is that it uses your wheel speed sensors. That's part of your ABS system. It uses your wheel speed sensors to find out the rotational speeds of each of the tires. Now here's the theory. An underinflated tire will have a smaller radius from the center of the wheel to the floor. An overinflated tire will have a bigger radius from the center of the wheel to the floor. A smaller radius wheel will spin faster than a larger radius uh, wheel. So your car's system works by looking at diagonal tires. It's going to look at the right front and left rear, add those numbers together and see the total rotational speeds and look at the left front and right rear and add those numbers together and see that total rotational speed. When it looks at both those different numbers, it's going to see if there's a huge difference. Something might be off and if something is off, it alerts you the driver by putting this on your dashboard. And that's how the indirect system works. Now we're going to look at the direct system. Now you can already tell this looks way more expensive because this is expensive. This is more expensive. You see the conventional tire valve, I can cut this up. I won't even cry. I won't care. This, if I break this, I'm going to cry. As you can see on the bottom of this, we have a sensor attached to it. We're going to call that the tire sensor because this measures pressure. This measures your tire pressures directly. So the way it works, you know, you got the cap, you take that off. And on the inside, you still have that same Schrader valve. You can hook up your air tool, opens up that passage. The air will come out from the back. Okay, it comes out from this hole. That's how it gets into the tire. The way you put this in your rim is you see this cap? You could actually remove this cap. So you know, once you get the cap off, you just have the body. Right? And what you do with this is you can put it in the rim. And then once you got it in there, you put the cap on top, you thread it in, you want to hand tighten it first. When you got it nice and snug, you can get a ratchet and a socket and just tighten it up. Not too much, obviously it's plastic, you don't want to go crazy. And you know, it'll be fine. This can directly measure the pressure in your tires. The air re-enters back into this hole. Now, right, you see the stem? That's an antenna. Look how it's connected. You see that's a sensor and it's connected to the antenna. This sends a signal to your car. Your car has a receiver that picks up the signal, it's hooked up to your dash, and that's how it alerts you, the driver, if your tires may be under or over inflated. What I really like about these tire sensors is in some systems, you can actually monitor each individual tire. You can see the pressure of each tire. 
That way you're proactively monitoring your tires while you're driving. This also has a battery that powers the sensor. So it's a three volt battery and it lasts about seven to 10 years. So eventually this will die. This sensor works in three different modes. The first one is called active mode, which you can also call like the normal operating mode because it sends a signal every minute to your receiver and that's monitoring that signal. The second one being sleep mode. Now in sleep mode, it's when you're not driving your car, your car is turned off, it's still running off battery life, but to save that battery life, it sends a signal only an hour or up to six hours, depending on some cars. And that's how that works. The third mode is called alert mode. Everybody put your hands in the air. That's when the system picks up on a rapid change in tire pressure and it starts alerting the system every second. This way you could figure out if your tires are about to go flat. That's why I really recommend being careful with these. You know, it's very delicate and expensive. Those ones are Manny, could you please explain the advantages of an indirect TPMS system? It's cheaper. Well done, Manny. Now, can you please explain the disadvantages? This style doesn't tell you if more than one tire is low, and it also doesn't tell you exactly what pressure each tire is at. Let's talk about the advantages of a direct TPMS system. So these are way more accurate, and also they're located in each of the tires, so the driver is able to find out if one or all four tires are underinflated. And also in some systems, the driver is able to monitor each individual tire's pressure. Excellent work, Manny. Now let's talk about the disadvantages. They're expensive. You want me to tell you, if you don't got money, throw that shit out. Now it's good to know, when you have a tire light that appears on your dash, it can appear in two different ways. The first one is where it's blinking. It starts blinking and flashing. Now that represents that there is a miscommunication in the system. It's not able to communicate properly. It may be a sensor related issue or whatnot, but it does not have to be directly tire pressure related. The second one is when you see a solid tire pressure light that's on your dash. That is directly related to tire pressures. So the system believes that there is something off about the tire pressures and then you should go and check them. After you get your tires repaired, they're all fine now, and you get the tire pressures back to what the tire placard says they should be, then you have to go through a procedure called the relearn procedure, where your car actually has to relearn the values of the tires. For the indirect system, usually there's a button, sometimes you press it or you hold it for like 5-10 seconds, other times there's a sequence, maybe step on the brake pedal 3 times consecutively, basically it's different for each model, but that's how you kind of relearn the values for the indirect system. If you happen to break a tire sensor, it's a little different, you might have to get it programmed by a dealership they have a tool sometimes that they use to go to each wheel and set that up or if your values are just off and you topped up your car sometimes you just have to drive it maybe 30 minutes maybe 20 minutes maybe an hour it depends on the car as well but that's the relearn procedure for these tire sensors now this is just additional information but I really feel like you guys should know it I explained both of these tire valves because you might be able to recognize a system just by looking at your wheel you might find something like this with a cap on it and you might say hey my system is direct because it uses a sensor a tire sensor. You might find the conventional tire valve and you might be able to tell that your system is indirect. But what some people do is they have sensors, right? But when they have to replace them, they often get conventional ones because they don't want to spend that extra money. But the problem is, yes, you'll get air into your tires, but you don't have that sensor anymore. It's not going to be able to report to your dashboard. And remember what I said about communication failure. If you don't have that sensor communicating, now you got this. Remember flashing because there is a communication fault in the system. It's also good to know that tire sensors not all look the same. It doesn't all have to look like this one that I'm showing you here. Some of them actually have a rubber stem. Some of them are banded. The banded style we don't really use anymore. But that's basically the information that I want you guys to know. So yeah, before I conclude this video, I just want to give you guys a quick message about uh, all the support I've been getting. So I know this channel is basically new, but I want people to know that it's not just something I want to do on the side. I'm trying to push this with a passion because I know deep down, like I like this stuff I like to teach people about you know cars and you know stuff that maybe you don't learn every single day and I'm not obviously the most perfect and polished teacher but I'm just letting you know that as you guys learn through my videos I'm also teaching myself you know I'm also trying to learn and get better at things and all this support it doesn't go unnoticed I, I really appreciate that truly love all my subscribers that I have the ones that are gonna come in the future if you watch this video just know that I'm going to keep producing and you know trying to trying to help each other that's how, how it should be you know I just want Want everyone to basically learn and you know, that's the whole goal so if you want to help me out if you want to support this page this channel you know follow me on my social media uh, websites you know uh, Instagram snapchat you know I'm always on there too my YouTube channel obviously I'm trying to push this so think about being a subscriber uh, leave a like you know whatever you guys want to do to support me I do appreciate it and I will catch you guys in the next video mm -hmm.